Hello and welcome to week 12 of Introduction to Diversity. Again, today we're on a tough subject because we are talking about Jewish Americans. But as I say that sentence, I realize that every single subject we've talked about in this class has been a tough subject and it doesn't matter which group you are, the experience of prejudice and discrimination is often devastating. And sometimes it's something you wish never happened, but the truth is it did happen. And so a lot of the stuff we're talking about in this class is stuff that is tough. And why are we talking about it? One is to remember, you know, we need to remember that slavery happened, that we oppressed women for thousands and thousands and thousands of years, pretty much all of human history. Okay. It's also important that we learn from our experiences. And that we don't make the same mistakes twice, even though history has this tendency of continuously repeating itself every 10 to 20 years. <laughs> and then also this idea of what can we do to improve the experiences of people in society along with improving society itself. Okay, so today I wanted to say we are studying Jewish Americans and, you know, but how do you talk about being Jewish without talking about the experience of the Holocaust and thousands of years of oppression? How do you talk about being black without talking about slavery and discrimination? Is there a way to move on from that? And so all of us as Americans have these experiences as American, okay? And we all share that, but intersectionality says the experience of being American is different based upon these intersectional layers of race and religion and ethnicity. Does a white American experience being American the same as a black American? They have unique divergent experiences. Same thing with the Jewish Americans. And a large part of modern Jewish identity is the, you know, the history of the last hundred years and what happened. And then going way back thousands of years because the experience of being Jewish, you know, aside from women, arguably the second most prejudiced and discriminated, if those are even proper words, against groups there are in all of human history because prejudice and discrimination is against people that are Jewish, you know, in my own knowledge from history going back 10,000 years, you know, at least we know about it for the last 5,000 years of that 10,000 years, there was some kind of discrimination. And so where does that origin of, you know, anti-Semitism come from? Okay, just like where does the origin of our racism in America against African Americans? Well, that started in the 1600s, you know, when slavery came to boot and then we created racial categories. But when it comes to being Jewish, there's just layer upon layer of history going back that touches every single country and almost every person on this planet, okay? So again, you know, you go to Babylonian times, they were discriminated against. You go to Roman times, they were discriminated against. There are stories of England, you know, in 800 AD, incredible atrocity of genocide against Jewish Americans. And this is in the Middle Ages, you know, or we can call those the Dark Ages, however you want to say it, early to Middle Ages, you know. But again, this was going on for a long time, and you can point at things like the bout between Christianity and Judaism, and, you know, why Christians for some odd reason think that, you know, that it was Jewish people that killed Jesus, even though it was the Roman Emperor, you know, but I mean, what can you do? Okay, so that history gets turned a lot. Um, but this experience of prejudice and discrimination against Jewish people goes deep. But again, the most modern, I don't know if this is the worst ever because there's been so many bad, but you have the Holocaust where you have six to nine million deaths at a minimum on top of all the other groups that were being discriminated against at the time, such as gypsies, for example, okay? So there's just such a deep history of prejudice and discrimination, but there's also this incredible rich culture of what it's actually like to be Jewish, you know? And I mean, you cannot avoid the impact of being Jewish upon America. I mean, you know, the biggest number one credit is always Hollywood. Where do you think all of our entertainment comes from? And that's maybe you could say that's stereotypical, but I mean, the greatest of the vaudeville acts, for example, if you were to start to rate it, you know, where does this history of music and oral tradition all coming together? You know, how much of that comes from people that are being Jewish, just like saying the blues, you know, is influenced by not only Scottish music, <laughs> I mean, you can't, but also African music, and then that blend of Scottish and African into bluegrass, jazz, and blues, okay? And it's just combining all these different cultural elements. 
So a lot of history when it comes to being Jewish in general, okay? A lot of history to the very powerful Jewish groups that other people don't talk about. See, what we're forgetting is the entire Old Testament is, you know, Jewish gaining power over their own lives and overcoming oppression and being a power unto themselves. And I see definitely where that leads into this Zionist attitude of returning into your homeland in modern times, for example, which is part of your discussion or maybe on one of your quizzes. Um, so that's just something that's going to come up. So you have to look at it from several different perspectives. Is the entire history of Jewish um, being oppressed, or is a lot of that having control over their own lives and having taken power into their own lives? But again, there's been a lot of conflict with Jewish and non-Jewish people. You have Muslim conflict with Jewish. You had, um, you know, again, European conflict with Jewish. You had the American conflict with Jewish, which wasn't as bad, um, but, you know, the anti-Semitism is still there. Uh, again, Babylon, Rome, it just goes back a long, long time, okay? And there's a lot of stereotypes that have to be deconstructed because, remember, we can say bad things about everybody and good things about everybody. So some of those negative stereotypes you might have heard which I'm not going to repeat currently, you know, maybe we should deconstruct some of those attitudes, okay? All right, so covering from the book, again, in America, we have the second highest Jewish population in the world, aside from Israel, and why is that? And again, hopefully we do, you know, have this America is the land of the free and religious tolerance, etc. Some values that we had in America, so it would make sense to me why someone would feel comfortable despite your religion in America at least more comfortable than other places in the planet, okay? But even so, people are still racist and prejudiced and, you know, discriminatory against all forms of sex, race, class, color, and just down the line, okay? Um, so that's why we're having this class, to overcome those forms of oppression and make the world a little bit more equitable, if not completely equitable, <laughs> if that's possible. 100% equity for all. That's a dream. Um, hopefully diversity this is the way, right? There's uh, 5.7 million Jewish people in America. Again, 40% of the world's population that's Jewish resides in the United States. However, they really haven't had a dominant group position in over 1,500 years. And so that's kind of what I, the whole introduction was about, okay? Having power over your life and other people, okay, is a status power in America if you're white, male, and Christian, for example. Same thing in Europe. And then, uh, you know, every other place has their forms of status. And India, it's the caste system, so it depends on your whole heredity, you know, <laughs> things like that, okay? It's all very complex, and we're not going to get into hierarchy and group domination. Currently, we've talked a lot about in this class, but again, having that minority status is very important and how that affects your overall life chances, okay? So again, very much so a historical experience of prejudice and discrimination, hence the introduction. And then anti-Semitism, again, is this prejudice and discrimination against people that identify as Jewish. Okay, so prejudice and discrimination. They receive an unequal treatment in the form of prejudice, discrimination, and segregation. And so the discussion this week talks about the Harvard uh, situation in the 20s where they tried to ostracize Jewish people because they were doing too well. They were getting... You know, and so they were kind of blowing everybody else out of the water when it came to acceptance rates based upon merit. And so the anti-Semites at the time decided to do something about that. Use that, which was an incredibly racist policy, just like the internment camps ostracizing just Japanese and not the Italians, for example. You know, that's very, you know, very racist policy, slavery and all the other Native American policies we've had. So there's been a bunch of those in our history, okay? Uh, so that has happened against Jewish people in the United States, okay? Uh, again, being Jewish, rich cultural history and ethnicity uh, that oftentimes has significantly different from the dominant group. And that's, again, just a matter of cultural perspective. What is significantly different, okay? Is it this idea of being an in-group versus an out-group, okay? And what does it mean to be an in-group? Aren't we all human? And so you have to kind of look at some of that stuff with in-group versus out-group dynamics. When it comes to group dynamics, that's really interesting to look at, okay? But again, this idea is, you know, just to let you guys know, you know, you can't choose where you're born and who your parents are and what you're socialized into. If you're born in India, you're most likely going to be Hindu. If you're in Palestine, Pakistan, you're most likely going to be Muslim. And, you know, it's just the way it is. In America, probably Christian, okay? Like 60%, Okay. Strong sense of group solidarity, as do we all. Go America. But, you know, same thing when it comes to your 
other forms of group identity in this sense of solidarity. Okay, there was this tendency to marry inside the group called endogamy. However, that has since changed. As you know, again, everybody in America, we tend to assimilate a little bit. We all blend, we all kind of mix a little bit, even if there is some segregation that we are still tearing down. We all kind of rub off on each other. We have so many words that are Native American and, you know, and just in English. And then English is a conglomeration of how many other different languages. You know, it just goes on and on and on. Okay, so again, what makes somebody Jewish? Look, guys, again, there's no such thing as a Jewish race. <laughs> just like with all other races, all humans are blended and we have this nice genetic diversity which enables very healthy babies without weird mutations, okay? So again, being Jewish is an ethnicity based upon a religion. It's just a group of people that identify with their religion, just like Christians. Are Christians a race? They are a group of people that identify with a religion, okay? All right. So someone that is Jewish, you could argue this idea of a biological connection through family, okay? You know, but again, family is over time. It's just, that's just the way it goes, okay? Everything gets blended. Okay, there's no biological difference to say that people that are Jewish are of one race, okay? And then again, in America, when we're talking about assimilation, this idea of Judaization is trending down. That means that our, you know, on a religiosity scale, that means again, as people incorporate American values, how is that affecting your sense of religiosity? Is it altering it as you're being exposed to different walks of life, for example? And being Jewish, you cannot escape from that, just like anybody else who comes to this country from somewhere else. Okay, so the patterns of immigration, um, they Jewish people were here early, as with everybody else. Um, they didn't necessarily come over as slaves like African Americans or Muslims, okay? But there again, there was this, you know, anti-Semitism. So America looked like a great place to be. So, you know, to avoid anti-Semitism, right? And so again, it turned out pretty good, but there have been some negative times, okay? Um, by 1870, there were around 200,000, same thing with Asians, okay? Um, they did not immediately assimilate. It did take many generations, but that's the way it goes with all immigrant status, okay? First generation hardly speaks the language and they kind of pick it up in older age. Uh, second generation knows the language, they start to build capital. Third generation gets some capital, they start to buy into the American dream. Once you buy into the American dream, all of a sudden you're finding yourself American with the materialism and the non-material values that come with our culture, okay? Uh, late 1800s, large numbers came and they stayed. I mean, I totally see why. I, you know, I've always loved America. I love where I live and I could totally see why any immigrant would want to come here. Plus it improves the economy. So again, we should allow immigration just for economic purposes, just a suggestion, not my personal opinion, just something to think about. Uh, in 1933, refugees started coming to avoid Germany. And this is another thing I put into the discussion for you guys, because I want you guys to look at, you know, what happened. We had a chance to allow everyone to come here you know, we said no because of racist policies. Um, I brought it up a little bit with the Japanese Americans and our, you know, again, they bombed Pearl Harbor because of our anger against racist policies. And in this time, it's not like the Jewish people got mad at us or anything, but I mean, we turned them away. We had a chance to save millions and we turned them away. We said America's not an option. Don't even bother crossing the ocean. And, you know, that's heartbreaking. Okay. So the largest populations today are in the Northeast, okay? Again, and that happens with most immigration, New York, New Jersey, and then Florida and California, but where you, you know, the coastal areas that are close to, you know, that are where immigrants can come to. So anti-Semitism, as we've talked about a lot in this lecture, the history of Jewish people is the history of overcoming oppression to the extent of hatred, hence anti-Semitism, okay? Uh, it's existed long before Christianity, but when Christianity came along and that scapegoating and that, uh, that just made it a lot worse, okay? They were scapegoated frequently. That's been going on throughout human history, blaming Jewish people for everything, and that's just ridiculous. That's like blaming the lower class for all your problems, okay? Uh, the Holocaust is a prime example of anti-Semitism, especially because it's such a violent, violent form of genocide, okay? Uh, and it was massive, and it was done by applying science, okay? 
In the U.S., it wasn't universal anti-Semitism, but it's always been very widespread, okay? So I always tell the story about the Green Book with the uh, African-Americans, how that great movie in the book, uh, the great movie that came out won Academy Awards, about how African-Americans had a book that told them where it was safe to travel around, but the inspiration for the Green Book came from the Jewish Americans, okay? The Jewish Americans had a book, okay? And so they had a book for a reason and the reason they had the book was because it wasn't safe for jewish americans to travel everywhere and so when african americans started traveling they used that as the inspiration okay and again the 20s and 30s were probably the worst with anti-semitism that's when the harvard plan comes out uh that's on your discussion and down south you see that you know they started we started finding out that you know, Ford of Ford Motor Cars was a huge anti-Semite. So was Lindbergh, uh, Charles Lindbergh, first one across the ocean. You had the German-American Bund, this grouping of a hate group during that time of pre-World War II leading up to it. Um, so anti-Semitism just rears its ugly head all the time. And that's because we continuously socialize anti-Semitic values to children. And that's just something we should stop. Okay, that is my personal opinion. It has grown again since the 1960s, okay? People tend to forget about the Holocaust, okay? Now, we've never institutionalized racism against Jewish Americans like we did with African Americans with Jim Crow or the Chinese Exclusion Act, for example, um, but it's always been that subtle institutional discrimination, okay? You know, kind of covert racism, if anything else, closed door kind of thing, but it exists. And we have to expose it for what it is. We have to open the door and show where anti-Semitism lives, okay? What really gets me is the idea of that all of all related, when you ask somebody this question, you know, who are, you know, I talked about it in the one lecture, but if you were to say which religion receives the most hate crimes, would you say, you know, Muslim, Christian, or Jewish? And, you know, it turns out Jewish, 50%. Muslims and Christians get about the same amount of hate crimes. Um, but, 50% of hate crimes are against people that are Jewish. And then I always say, all right, use your critical thinking and why? And then you have to look at 10,000 years of human history. How far does it go back? Okay. Um, but if you're going to go 10,000 years in human history, on a side note, make sure you study the evolution of monotheism. Okay. You know, because monotheism, this idea of one God took a long time to come about. It took a long time for the world's religions to be consolidated into like five or six that believe in one God theories. Okay. And so, uh, Jewish people were some of the first, the Zoroastrianists, the Persians, um, you had King Tut's parents, King Akhenaten and Queen Nefertiti, who created a whole new society of being able to go directly to God. And upon their death, King Tut was kind of taken over by his advisors and they wiped out that city, removed all the hieroglyphics they can to hide it. You know, Socrates, why was Socrates killed? He suggested one God. Okay, so this idea of monotheism goes real deep. And so what's the connection of monotheism, the history of religion, the history of Judaism? Guys, it's a wonderful, beautiful, complex, historical thing to think about. So in modern times, again, you'll find something similar to like the Chinese or the Japanese. Jewish Americans are very well assimilated. However, there still are these subtle microaggressions, subtle prejudice and discrimination, along with the overt discrimination of our 50, 60, 70 year old past, such as World War II and the Holocaust, where millions of people were exterminated. Genocide happens all the time, guys. Um, it's happened a lot in human history. We start to study all the different groups. Um, very sad. Again, we're studying society groups of people. And when we study groups of people, not all of it's pretty. A lot of it's nice. Christmas, you know, I shouldn't have said that out loud. I meant Christmas time. <laughs> Again, guys, it's modern times. You have to undo your old social... I meant that. You have to undo your old socializations to remodern yourself, like how not to use pronouns. You can't say, like, you know, John said that he. You have to say, John said that John, to avoid pronouns. And in modern times, you have to deconstruct all your old words. Like, it can't be Christmas anymore. It's got to be something else, or it's not politically correct, right? So I was just thinking, because we're coming upon Christmas when I'm recording this video, and I started thinking about, you know, snowflakes and going to the mall with my daughter and buying like some presents for my family just you know not a lot like like something small and cheap because i would never spend money on them no, i'm just kidding just you never <laughs> uh, whatever all right but what you're gonna find is you know jewish americans are pretty well assimilated into modern times okay and that's 
pretty much okay. Um, there's a lot of problems with that, again, because, you know, it comes at sometimes the cost of losing your culture um, and becoming too American. But is that a bad thing? And again, I feel like with this discussion, I'm just bringing out all sides of so many coins, you know? I'm just thinking about things in multiple different ways from multiple different historical perspectives and asking why, what's going on, you know? Are Jewish Americans losing their culture identity? And is that a bad thing? You know, is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? If Native Americans assimilating into a European way of life, is that a bad thing or is that a good thing? I mean, right now we're not seeing good positive results. So maybe it just wasn't handled right. Or maybe Native Americans, maybe we should have just left America for them in the first place and we shouldn't even be talking about Jewish Americans in America. It should be Jewish Americans in Turtle Island. I think it was the original name, right, for America, from the American or the Native Americans perspective. Native people's perspective, indigenous person's perspective, no longer Columbus Day perspective. <laughs> so again, I've asked this question a lot in this class, but is America a melting pot or is it more like oil and water? Some aspects are melting pot, some aspects are oil and water. Okay, and so we're kind of deciphering what it is. So again, women and men in America, oil and water. We didn't blend. Now we are. Now women are working with men. Now women can become a vice president and next a president, hopefully. Okay, now someone who's black can be a president. Okay, so just a lot of things to be thinking about. I hope it wasn't too breaking. Thinking about some of this stuff breaks me a lot. Um, because when you look at the history of what people have done at times, it makes you call into question your own humanity. <laughs> But hopefully to ask yourself, what can I do to improve things and make it better? All right. I wish you guys the best. Have a wonderful day.